Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast on Matters Financial. Today's subject is on employee benefits. Our guest speaker today is Alan Makinson, Head of Employee Benefits. Alan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. I've uh, worked in financial services and employee benefits for over 25 years now. Joined Pareto six years ago. Um, advise businesses on employee benefits and the importance of getting the strategy right, ongoing reviews and also making sure that the communication to employees is correct. Great, thank you. So when we're talking about employee benefits, for our listeners, do you want to just explain what we mean by the term employee benefits? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole range of things. It's basically anything that supports an employee and supports the business in terms of recruitment, retention, and also just making sure that the employees are well looked after. We generally break things down into three categories. So we'll talk about savings, which is all things pensions, lots of fun, and then protection, which is about making sure employees, family dependents are looked after in the event of the worst case scenario of death in service, but also in the event of illness. And also um, health and well-being, so things that just fit in the space of supporting an employee, getting fit, staying healthy, getting back to work, getting treatment for certain medical conditions. And why are employee benefits so important to employers? I guess we, we still sit in quite a tight labour market and we, we speak to a lot of employers and they still find that keeping really good people and recruiting really good people is a challenge and it has been for a long, long time and we don't really see that changing that much and hopefully employee benefits fit into that space of supporting an employer, retaining those good quality people who they want to keep and look after but also in the recruitment market making sure that they can get the right people in the right job and keep them there. And you mentioned some of the various covers that are available to employers out there. Do all of them work for every single business or are there specific ones? What advice would you give to any directors, shareholders, owner-managed businesses out there listening to this podcast? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. There is absolutely no one-size-fits-all. And I think our job is actually sitting down with the people who are running the business and the HR team and understanding exactly what that business is about. So it's understanding where the business has come from, what are the key things that drive the recruitment strategy, what sort of people they employ, and then having an open conversation with them around what sort of benefits are going to work for them. So there is definitely no one size fits all. It's about understanding the business, the people, and then talking through a strategy that's going to work for each business. And how would you determine what is right for a business? It's really asking key questions about where the business recruits from, perhaps where they're losing people to, what their objectives are in terms of um, spending money on employee benefits, and, and it's really lifting the lid on what they've got in place already. Um, I mean, we, we look at sort of pensions and whether the pension scheme is fit for purpose. We look at things that fit in that protection space and review on cost and make sure that they're delivering the, the right sort of value for money for the employer. And then we also look at the communication aspects to make sure that what the, what the business have actually got in place is understood and valued by employees, otherwise businesses are wasting the money. I think you've made two very good points there, Alan. One is in terms of pensions and costs, and there's things that we can do in terms of salary exchange. So for some of the employees out there listening, there is a way of potentially saving money via the pensions and maybe be able to redirect that into other benefits that may be applicable for staff members. And the second point that you've made is about communication, because there's no point providing all singing, all dancing if no one knows what it actually provides as a benefit to the staff. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So salary exchange, we've done a huge amount of work on salary exchange over the last four or five years. 
and we see that continuing. There's still lots of employers who haven't done it. And, and the key message, I think, is if you've not, it's certainly something that you should consider. There's not many reasons why an employer shouldn't do it, and it saves the business money, but it also saves employees money, so it can increase an employee's net pay. And we've still got issues around cost of living, so that can be a really supportive measure for employees. So I still see quite a lot of mileage in that area. And, and typically, where we can save the business money, that can then help them look at a budget for other areas of employee benefits. So we often find a business might say, hey, I want to do something in terms of improving our employee benefit offering, but we've not got a huge budget. Well, as part of the review pro process, we can usually look at ways of actually creating a budget and then delivering on other employee benefit areas. Good, thank you. So just in summary for our listeners, what would you say that anyone out there that's thinking about reviewing their employee benefits, what, what, what should they be thinking about just now? I, I think it's really simple, it's come and talk to us. I mean, we will sit down with an employer, we'll have an open conversation, we will see if there's areas where we can help or there's areas where the business can improve the benefit strategy. And if there's not, we will tell you and we will say, hey, you know, what you've got is right, it's in place, it's cost effective, it's well communicated. And, it, and if nothing else, it gives that employer a, a comfort feeling that they're doing everything right. But usually you will find areas where we can improve on. So it's just sitting down, having an open conversation, and it's always no obligation. Great. Alan, thank you. Thank you for your time today and all of our listeners for listening. As part of the podcast, we always ask a random question. So if money was no object and you could do anything, Alan, what would you like to do? I think you know the answer to that, yeah. Stuart. I'm going to go and get a camper van, that, drive that, around Europe drinking red wine. That's my answer. Can we do it together? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Great, great answer. Um, as our regular listeners will know, this podcast is part of a series that we have produced. Please make sure you subscribe and follow any of the other podcasts. These are on Hooper A2R, Estate and Tax Planning, Protecting Your Assets, Retirement Planning, Growing Your Wealth, Cash Flow Planning, Protecting Your Business and Business Exit. As always, the information provided in these podcasts are general in nature and should not be relied upon without seeking specific professional financial advice. If you'd like to speak to someone regarding any of the circumstances in this or any of the other podcasts, please feel free to speak to myself or your regular advisor for a fee-free, no-obligation review. Thank you for your time, and Alan, thank you for your speech today. Thanks very much. Cheers.